Battalion Legacy launched on Steam on the 16th of August. And in case you didn't know, this game was originally Battalion 1944, which launched in May 2019. But the small player base it gathered on launch very quickly left the game. So now that the original publisher, Square Enix, has no control over the game, the control's gone back to the devs, the devs have decided to launch it as Italian Legacy as a free-to-play shooter. Now, as a free-to-play shooter, you generally expect lots of in-game monetization or sort of DLC, but there is no in-game monetization, no DLC, and there's going to be no further patches or expansions to the game which makes me question why the devs have even decided to launch it as a free-to-play shooter because they are hosting servers or at least paying for some server hosting themselves so it's going to be costing them money and making them no money it could just be that the devs are really passionate about this game that they made so if they are just putting it up at a loss to themselves so people can play it fair play nice one on them now the whole point of this game is to recapture the classic World War II shooter experience, generally I think from Call of Duty 1 and Call of Duty 2. Now in Battalion, there's only two game modes. Now on the Steam Store page it says there's technically three, but there's TDM, Search and Destroy, and TDM Bolt Action Rifles, so it is really just two. And these game modes are limited to 5v5, that's it, there's no increase or decrease in player count if you are in a server that isn't full i think there are ai bots that fill those player slots and in game there are over 30 weapons to choose from you have the german faction americans british and soviets so there is a nice selection of weapons here and you've got all the classic world war ii weapons being represented alongside some other more unique ones i guess like the Fedorov Aftermath, which is, I think, a pre-World War II Russian automatic rifle. You've got a double barrel shotgun. You've got the British Jungle Carbine, which is essentially the Lee Enfield rifle, but shorter. So there is a decent selection of weapons. And the gunplay, at least from memory, does feel quite close to Call of Duty 2. There's a low time to kill. Uh, you have regen health, which I don't think was in Call of Duty 2. And I think headshots from all weapons are an insta-kill. But gunplay just really feels inconsistent. Generally, bolt actions are a one-hit kill to the chest. But sometimes they just won't kill someone to the chest. And then the person you've shot will shoot you in the chest and you'll die. Which doesn't make sense at all, really. And, and it can feel quite frustrating. And, well, it just leads to a bad user experience, really, if you have this inconsistent gunplay. But it's not just the bolt actions that have problems, the automatics do as well. So I'm pretty sure that the automatics use recoil and a slight bloom effect, which doesn't feel good. So what bloom is, is where you're aiming down your weapon, the bullets won't go where you're aiming, they'll just randomly sort of appear around where you're aiming kind of like how battlefield does it fortnite and enlisted does it it's generally casual shooters that use this system so when using the automatic weapons you're aiming at your target but you'll be missing because the game's decided that you're gonna miss so automatics feel quite terrible to use and when you shoot objects or cover there's very very little particle effects so like dust debris stuff like that coming off like the walls that you've shot this sort of makes it feel like when you're shooting an automatic weapon at someone and your bullets are blooming around them you just have no idea where the bullets are going because there's no or pretty much no visual feedback from the game to show you where your bullets are actually landing so you have this inconsistent sort of bolt action gunplay mixed with inconsistent automatic gunplay so Generally, the gunplay just isn't that good from a user experience. And when you ADS, it slows you down quite significantly. And this leads to people just sprinting and jumping around corners while ADSing in midair, which is very old school. I started doing it as well in game and I found it to be a lot better than just slowly ADSing around a corner. 
and I guess it is a very classic Call of Duty style, but personally for me, I don't like this style of like movement and gunplay. It is very Call of Duty like, very old school and bad, I'd say. Now the maps are generally small to medium Call of Duty maps. They're fine, I guess. There's nothing really to complain about them. But since this game is trying to emulate the classic shooter, it's brought in terrible spawns as well. And the spawning is extremely terrible in this game. I've had people spawn in behind me. I've spawned behind enemies. I've spawned in with enemies looking at where I've spawned. And I've even spawned directly next to someone who is AFK. This game has been out on Steam since May 2019 and I think it was out in early access before that. How are the spawns this bad and because the devs have said there's going to be no further support for this game, the spawns will never be fixed. So expect inconsistent gunplay with terrible spawning. Now onto the audio, the guns sound fine to be honest, no complaints there, but in my time playing it I don't remember hearing any enemy footsteps at all which in this style of close quarters shooter you need good audio from your game so you can just hear where people are and this game doesn't deliver on that the performance of the game was completely fine i'm running at very high settings with a lot of extra bells and whistles turned on and i've had no performance issues at all and i do expect lower end systems to be able to run this game fine now I generally don't mention server browsers when I talk about games, but I have to talk about the server browser in Battalion Legacy because the server browser is horrible. So first off, you cannot filter anything in the servers apart from if they're full or locked. You can search for server names, but at least the official servers are just all sharing the same generic name with like a little code at it. So searching for servers is generally useless. and Traditionally, in probably every single game that I've played and you've played, when you refresh a server list, every single server will show on that list and you just scroll down to find them, but not in Battalion Legacy. It will only show you a certain amount of servers, then you have to click the next or previous buttons at the bottom to essentially change the page of servers you're looking at, but it doesn't tell you how many pages there are, so you can just be click it next, 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 and you have no idea how many servers are actually going to show up. It's a terrible design and probably the worst server browser I've ever used. So in conclusion, you know, Battalion Legacy is trying to recapture the old school World War II shooters like Call of Duty 1 and 2, and it kind of does, but it also captures the bad parts of those games as well. And games from back then have evolved, even Call of Duty's evolved from its original design. Maybe only a little bit, but still, when Call of Duty doesn't want to play like how it used to play, and you're trying to make a game like that, I think you've made a bad choice in what style of game you're going to make. So I don't recommend playing this at all. It is free. It's kind of small, so you should download it pretty quickly. So you could try it out and you've got nothing to pay for it. You're going to put no money into it ever because they're not going to have any monetization but they're also not gonna change the game. So if you start playing it and finding anything you dislike about it, it's gonna stay the same and it's never gonna change. So if you like this video, please give it a like, subscribe for more, and thank you for watching.